getting I like that extra, at it. I know it literally <laughs> makes my throat like feel like it's closing up when I talk about these because they're hot. It's taken many times for me to learn. I know this garden's where I want to grow. My life was like a seed of inhibition. But now I feel like a flower in the sun. All's been stripped away, I know for certain. That the life I want to live has just begun. My darling, I have dreamed of you forever. I can't escape the truth of what I know. It's taken many times for me a tumbling. Oh, this garden's where I want to grow Hey y'all, welcome to Stiver's Homestead. I'm Zach. And I'm Jen. And today we are gonna show you our 2019 preserve. Does that sound right? Our, it's Preser not harvest. Preservation? Preservation. Preservation. Is that right? I think so. Mm. So, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, throughout this, uh, this summer and uh, what they're calling fall, which is 95 degrees here in Kentucky. <laughs> yeah, we not have, so much of a fall. Right. Jen has been pumping out some canning and freezing. So we thought it would be cool to actually walk through what did we fully can, like how much of everything did yeah. we do, and how close, is it enough? Yeah. Is it enough to get us through the winter for everything that we need? We also have a little bit more to do. Yeah. I wanna do some beans, um, which I will show, I'll do a video of, and I haven't quite decided if I'm gonna can my butternut squash, or if I'm gonna leave it, or if I'm gonna do half and half. Um, I know that it sits on the shelf for a year, which is really awesome. And some of y'all, and some of y'all may not may not know that. Yeah. Um, that butternut squash, it'll sit on your shelf all winter. Yeah. That's why it's got a winter squash. But the process with butternut squash, it's not difficult, but it's a little bit time consuming. Yeah. And as a homeschooling mom and a homestead wife and everything else that we do. <laughs> The canning process would just be a little bit easier to grab when we want to have it, and I didn't have time to plan for the meal. You need quick, so. easy meals. Yeah. You don't need long, drawn out meals unless it's football Sunday. Right. Because then you cook all day. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> all right, so let's jump right into this. Let's do it. We're going to show you one of each that, of everything that we did, um, even the freezer stuff. So the first one is our tomato juice. <clears throat> so this recipe boy. came from the ball canning book. <laughs> Will you grab that? We'll grab it? Yeah. All right, I'll grab it. So we've showed this book quite a few times on lives and videos, but I just want to show it again because this is my best friend in canning season. Best friend. Um, it's just an awesome book. It's a com complete book of home preserving and it's by Ball and it's just an awesome, awesome book. <laughs> um, almost all the recipes of everything that we canned came from this book. So people ask all the time, you know, it's different from my area, so I don't know the times and the pressure and all that stuff, the altitude, all that. So, if you just get one of these, you can get them off of Amazon. Um, they're in our store. They will tell you literally everything that you need to know about canning. Yep. There's nothing, I mean, they don't leave out anything. The recipes are all safe, tried and true, tested. Mm -hmm. And they tell you all the logistics of canning. Um, you know, the technical things that I don't always mention in the videos because everybody's different and i'm not going to tell you how to do it i just give you my recipes so right. that book gives you everything that you need to know does not leave anything out yep and that's them uh, like she said it's in our uh, description it's uh homestead products i think we have it listed at as things we mm -hmm. use in our videos uh so you can click that and that's where that that yep. book is but this one is our tomato juice so this recipe was in there you can 
pressure can it or you can water bath it. We did both sometimes. It just depended on the day. If we had extra time, we would do the water bath. If we had less time, we would just do the pressure canner because it's simpler. Let's let's pump the brakes this for a second because there may be somebody watching like, what do you mean? Wet bath, pressure canning, water. So you can get two different kinds of canners. You Tomatoes can be wet bath, which is a water bath canner. It's just a pot. You don't even have to buy one. Um, if one. you have a big pot at your home with a lid, there you go. Simple. Right there. Um, and That's a wet bath. Where you playing at? Look, look at the video. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and the pressure canner is sitting right beside it. You can also get those anywhere. Walmart, Tractor Supply, Real King, any of your farm stores, mm -hmm. Amazon, whatever. So, for the tomato juice, we did a rough estimate of 100 quarts. Yep. So we didn't go through and count every single one, but we kind of grouped it by numbers and we're about up to a hundred quarts. A so. hundred quarts of tomato juice. Yeah. That's a lot of tomatoes, folks. Yeah. Um, and the reason we do tomato juice and not say chili and spaghetti sauce and different things of that, um, we did that at one year. First off, your processing times are a lot longer. Yeah. It's gonna take a lot more time to actually fully make a chili sauce or a, a spaghetti sauce. Second reason is, um, you might get tired of that flavor, mm -hmm. right? You know, so you might get tired of that one specific chili sauce or to, uh, spaghetti sauce that you made and want to try something different. Right. Well, if you've already made it, you can't. So mm -hmm. just having the tomato juice, then it's free for all. We can yeah. do whatever we want when it's time to make spaghetti, the chili or the spaghetti. Chili. Um, you can make it into any kind of sauce you want to. You could even yeah. turn it into salsa right. I mean, if you have all this stuff. So tomato it's very soup. versatile. You know, we don't even have to have it for chili. We can yeah. have it for different soups that we want to do uh, besides that. So that's why any of our just straight tomatoes that we're trying to make something in the near form of chili or spaghetti, it's always just going to be tomato juice. Yeah. Um, Seriously craving chili now. <laughs> me too. Very much. We actually got pulled chicken in the crock pot, so that's going to be delicious. That'll but do. Whatever. A hundred <laughs> quarts of tomato juice. Yep. And look how pretty that is. You ain't going to get tomatoes that look that red and beautiful out of a, a can of V8 or whatever you get that's when right. you make your chili. All right. So that was the first one. Next is spicy pickles. So as some of y'all know, I did a video on this and I used the Miss Wages pack. Um, later on in the season, I actually did a little bit of my own recipe, which was kind of cool. Uh, but Zach loves the spicy. Yeah. I like them, but not as much as other pickles. So these are the spicy ones. The recipe is also in the ball book. I actually grouped them all together. So the okay. spicy and then we have dill pickles. That's his favorite dill. and Raylan's favorite. Yep. I'm not a dill pickle person, but we did all kinds of dill pickles. They're this size, which is pint. We have pint and a half and we have quarts. Yeah. Where's the other I didn't grab the, the bread and butter. Well, so, we did bread and butter pickers. So, Pick, pickers. <laughs> <laughs> pickles as well. <laughs> yeah, so we did three types of pickles, spicy dill and bread and butter. And that total was? 70 quarts. 70 quarts of that. So we had cucumbers running out of our ears. They're still on the vine. Yeah. And it's October 1st. Yeah. Well, when you all see this, it'll be October. S no. Yeah. 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 October. It's October 1st. It sure is. Happy October. All right. So <laughs> we still got cucumbers and, and we're in zone 6B and that's quite amazing. We've never yeah. had cucumbers grow that long. Um, the, the variety we did was be at Alpha's and they were fantastic. Awesome cucumbers. Well, that, we won't grow another <laughs> cucumber. No. Um, that's the only one we'll grow. We love the taste. It had a thinner skin, so it wasn't real thick. Yeah. Um, and it made an amazing pickle. So. Yeah. These are, we have given these pickles to so many people and they absolutely love them. Yeah. Um, they're just some great pickles that will last a really long time. So. Yep. And, Who doesn't uh, love pickles on the shelf? Right. And she has all kinds of videos <laughs> of those. The bread and butters were, were her own recipe. Yeah. Um, and we'll probably for next year make our own spicy mm -hmm. pickle recipe. Um, really get little inventive there. Yeah. Next. Next. That was loud, wasn't it? It was. My bad. I even <laughs> real loud. Apologies. So this year in our garden, we grew bush beans. They were Blue Lake bush beans from In My Gardener. At first they struggled and then they kicked in gear and we we also did a second round of them and they did awesome. So, and tenderettes. Yeah, and tenderettes. I forgot about those. Um, so we did green beans and this is you know, kind of bulk them together. Yeah. yeah. So when we ran out, or when we started running low on green beans, I was looking for a green bean and potato recipe that I could can because, you know, the green beans were only so much and the potatoes are so filling. So I thought, you know, what perfect meal. I'm going to put potatoes in my green beans anyway when right. I cook them. And some Joe bacon. Yeah. 
So I found that recipe actually from Deep South Homestead and Crazy Daisies. I can't remember which one posted it. I think it was Crazy Daisies. I Dazes. think so too. And I think it was alive. Yeah, it was alive. So if you can find that, um, she goes through the whole process of everything that you do. And it's super simple. It's quick. And it has to be pressure canned um, along with the regular green beans. So we love green beans. Everybody in our family loves green beans. This is so easy that we can pull off of our shelf and add to a meal. And honestly, with the potatoes, it's almost like a whole meal all yeah, by itself. it's fantastic. Like she said, she kind of ran down to the amount of green beans where it wasn't enough for a meal and we weren't going to get a bunch, so that's why we did it this route. Yeah. I'll find that Crazy Days is live and link it down below in the description you if go. you're interested in it. Yeah, because a lot of people have asked, how long do I boil the potatoes and this and that. Um, I do know from the potatoes, that's all your, your choice. Yeah, it is. It's basically a choice. Um, and a lot of people have asked, do I peel them? And that depends on whether they're homegrown or if they're store-bought. If they're store-bought potatoes, definitely peel them because you don't know what they were grown in. Right. If they're homegrown, it's a choice because you know how they were grown, what kind of soil they were in, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so, we did 20 quarts of regular green beans by themselves and then 20 quarts of the green beans and taters. So a total of 40 quarts. 40 quarts, so that is just awesome. Yes. I'm super excited about these. Um, this is actually our second year doing green beans. We did it once before and we canned so many that we couldn't even use them all, but we're gonna do it this time. Very excited about it. <laughs> Love the green beans. Love yes. all that action. And you know, I was trying to think in my head, there's 52 weeks in a year. How many would you say for us is straight winter when we can't grow anything so it's october right now we're still growing stuff but it's basically out so probably october november december january five months uh yeah i mean well with the with the hoop covers it's going to be different yeah because i mean sometimes in december here it's warm yeah but. so uh, let's say this 20 out of the 52 weeks we can't get something fresh yeah so for but, 20 yeah. so we have double the amount we could eat two quarts of these right. a week and that would make it to our next one yeah perfect so, that's how you kind of do your little preserving math that's how there. you do it that's right all right next up is the cowboy candy so i also did a video on this it was so good um the cowboy candy recipe i actually just found online i couldn't find the exact one that i wanted in the book because i wanted pineapples in mine Getting I like that extra. I know it literally <laughs> makes my throat like feel like it's closing up when I talk about these because they're hot. <laughs> um, ideally, we would have taken the seeds out. Yeah. But we did not. And I still love them. I really do. Uh, I think they're going to be really good for like Super Bowl Sunday. We're going to throw them on some nachos and that, roast yeah. them, throw some sweet barbecue sauce on. They're going to be so good. But right now, I have them in the fridge and I eat about one a week. <laughs> because they're so hot <laughs> yeah and two things about like we did something a little extra special we threw pineapple in these yeah which is something that you won't find in most recipes jen, jen did a nice little video on these uh cowboy candy with the pineapple in it and it was so absolutely delicious yeah. um it smelled great um like i said that's in our kind of greenhouse garden playlist um they there are a couple things you could do to not have them as hot First off, we're not big spicy fans. I like spicy, but not I don't like, like like kill you spicy. Right, jalapeno is <laughs> our limit. We yeah. usually don't go high, higher heat than that. Um, but we could have removed all these seeds. But when you had the amount of harvest yeah. that we had, it was insane. It was insane. You yeah. know, we had to get things done because things were going to rot on the table if we didn't hurry up and just do it. Yeah. So that's why we left the seeds in it. But like she said. If you eat them straight, yeah, you're going to get on fire. But yeah. if you mix them in with other stuff like nachos or just different taco kind of stuff, it's not near as bad. Yeah. Chop them up, make it like one, like a relish, and you'll be good to go. So yeah. they are really delicious, though. So I actually made 20 pints of this, which is going to last me until the end of the world. So. Yeah, yeah. They, <laughs> because we'll never we, eat that many. We are 100% sustainable on yeah. cowboy candy. <laughs> We're not growing jalapenos next year. <laughs> All right, so next up is salsa. Mm, my so, favorite. Yes, this recipe was also in the ball book, and I also did a video about it. Yes, I? you did yeah. do a video on salsa. So that recipe is in our YouTube channel somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> go to the playlist, go to Garden Greenhouse. Now, there's still a lot in there, but that's where all the canning stuff is. Yeah, but this salsa is amazing. Um, it's tomatoes, which are homegrown tomatoes, our homegrown peppers our homegrown jalapenos, our even homegrown, our homegrown onions. Yep, our homegrown onions, homegrown banana peppers, and store-bought cilantro. Yeah, and <laughs> because, that's just because my cilantro 
died early on and I forgot to plant it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it died uh, but it's I think right when we started planting. So the only yeah. thing store bought is the cilantro, but we got yeah. we got an organic non-GMO. It's some good salsa. It's not hot, it's got a nice flavor to it, and it's very mild. Mm -hmm. um, even the kids love it. And for salsa, we did 30 pints of this. So we That's love a lot, a lot of, salsa. of salsa. I honestly don't know if that will be enough right. until next year, but it's a lot. So might just have to ration it out. <laughs> yeah, salsa is my go-to snack. I yeah. can eat. I would say one jar would last me a week, but that's a lie. Yeah. Um, I could sit down and probably eat this probably whole two jar nights. and two nights. Well, I could probably eat it a night if I really <laughs> wanted to. But yeah, I'm gonna try to limit myself to one a week. Yeah. So it'll spread out. There you go. You get that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up is our pepper jelly. The newest thing that we've done canning, and it's battling with salsa. Yeah. So this was also our jalapenos. Um, the recipe, I think it was in the ball book. I can't remember. If not, I just found it online, but I did do a video, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I think I did. I think so. So you can find that one too. <laughs> I'm going to link the playlist there you go. just so you can have all these. So Crazy Days is in our playlist for all the gardening yeah. stuff. Um, it looks really dark, but it's not. It's just the lighting. But this stuff is so good. Um, if you get some cream cheese and a Ritz cracker and this stuff and put it, oh my goodness. That's it heaven on so a cracker. Good. It's the perfect uh, snack for like appetizers or football Sunday or just throwing out. If you want some snacks during the day, it's absolutely perfect. And we made a crap load yes, of it. Yes, we did. If you're having <laughs> any kind of thing with guests that you're trying to have a snack for yeah. or an appetizer, right here. Yeah, so we made 30 jelly jars of this stuff. That's a lot. So that's a lot. <laughs> uh, we're probably going to give some away. but Christmas presents. Yeah, they're good Christmas presents. They're so good. Everybody yeah. loves it. Everybody that tries it is like, what is that? It is so amazing. Yeah. It, it's mind blowing how yeah. good it is. Like, why have I not had this my whole life? Yeah. So I know a lot of people that are mm -hmm. into the canning world, they make pepper jelly a lot. But if you're newer to it, definitely put this on your go-to list for next year. Yeah. Uh, it's just jalapenos. And then all the rest of stuff is baking kind of stuff yeah. and like brown sugar and stuff sweet stuff yep to kind of tolerate the heat all right next up is bell peppers so we grew bell peppers in our garden and my stepdad did as well and we had so many it's our son's favorite snack um, favorite thing for lunch too but he couldn't eat that many so we froze a lot which we'll show you mm -hmm. and then we decided to can the rest because we ran out of freezer space so this is simple the recipe is in the ball book it has to be pressure canned and we did third, hold on, where's it at? Lost it. 20, um, he wrote 20 pints, but this is a jelly jar. So <laughs> we did 20 jelly jars of these. And then I think we did have a few pints um, that we did overall. But I, if I remember right, you can't do more than pints for the- That's, That is peppers. correct, yeah. yeah. So these are gonna be awesome. Um, we can pull these out for tacos, for sauteing, for breakfast, lunch, dinner, whatever we want to. Or just um, eat them right out of the or jar. Or just eat them right out of the jar. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to be awesome. We love bell peppers and it's something that we literally have to buy every week at the grocery during yeah. the winter. And now we don't. That's right. <laughs> so these were not enough, yeah. I would say. It's not oh, enough. No. But with the, what we have in the freezer, it may yeah. be close, uh, but we eat so many bell peppers. The thing with like. the bell peppers that we grew is a lot of them went into the salsa and stuff right. like that. So. We didn't have a lot of plain ones left over to can. Yep. But the last canning item. The last canning item is our whole kernel corn. So we did not grow corn in our garden, but we bought two bushels from a local non-GMO organic farm down the road. Yep. Uh, we love them. We do it every year and we pressure can this corn into these pints and we have 20 pints. And we have some frozen, which a I'll show you. A lot frozen. Yeah, so I'm pretty excited about this. I usually just freeze it, but we decided to can some. And we can pull these out for any meal and have them as a side. And the kids love it, we love it. And we can have corn all winter long. We, That's right. We won't have to buy that nasty 18 cent corn at the store. <laughs> <laughs> One time she said, I was like, it can't be good if it's 18 cents. Um, but the reason we don't go corn, 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 the reason we don't go corn in our uh, garden is because of where we don't have a, an extremely large amount of space. Um, corn, to get what we want to preserve, we would need to use it for a lot of space. Yeah. So eventually we'll get there once we extended our garden out. Um, but for now, we love our little Galrine Farms. Uh, they have the best sweet corn you'll ever taste. And so that's why we just use them. That's right, and here's my butternut squash um, I wanted to show you. We have 40 of these. 
so they're awesome. It looks they're very... All, di all different sizes. Yeah, <laughs> all different shapes and sizes, but we have these everywhere on pretty much every shelf in this house. Yep. Um, super excited about those. We grew them from seed and they did awesome this year. So Absolutely. now we'll show you the frozen stuff. All right, so now for frozen stuff, we're gonna zoom through this. Uh, we have bell peppers, which I told you about. We have seven bags of these. So I put them in portion sizes. Like this is probably two portions. So when I go to use this, I'll thaw it in the fridge, eat half and then eat the other half throughout the week. And all you gotta do with those is just cut them, take all the seeds out, Wash them. Make wash, sure wash them. Yeah, wash them and then stick them in freezer bags. Yep. Quick and easy. Quick and easy. Next is banana peppers. Um, these are awesome for frying, for sauteing, for just eating raw. I love them just as snacks. Deep fried. And they're really good. Mm. Um, and, and, you know, these are in Ziploc freezer bags. And a lot of people are going to tell you that it's better to do it with the food savers and for stuff. Sure. All that. We don't have one. Uh, they're a little bit pricey for us. But... You know, use what you have and do what you have with what you have. So this is what we do. Um, they're freezer bags and they're sealed very tightly. The air is sucked out personally by yours truly. So. <laughs> and yours truly. <laughs> um, until and we get a food saver, that's what we got. Right. And the thing about anything that's freezer, we don't let anything freezer go longer than a year. Yeah. Um, you know, if it's in there over a year, um, basically we'll just get rid of it. But yeah. we're pretty good about making sure we eat everything yeah. uh, within that year's time. So this is squash and zucchini. No, this is just zucchini. Um, this was blanched and frozen, and I have a lot of this. Um, I actually didn't tell you how much of the banana peppers. I have four bags of banana peppers. That's it? That's it, because oh, a lot of it went into salsas oh, right. and pepper right. jellies. and Yeah. Um, the zucchini, I have 15 bags of. So we grew, I think it was eight zucchini plants? Yeah. Uh, something like that close to that number and we got a crap ton of zucchini so we froze a lot of it and I'll show you what we did with the rest of it but we love zucchini it's something that I love having in the summertime but if I can have it in the winter it's even better because it's just such an easy thing to make and you can saute it up and it's so good and you know that's one of the biggest things when it's fresh yeah it tastes so much better than store-bought like I mean yeah. I know everything does but like zucchini and squash specifically like when you buy it store-bought like what even is this it has zero taste yeah so at least when it's fresh it, it at least has some flavor to it that's right all right so next up is the haller Haller, Haller, Haller Pinos. Haller Pinos. <laughs> uh, we have. It says 12 or 13, so <laughs> whichever one. <laughs> um, we cut the tops off these, scooped the seeds out, and left them whole. So we use these for eating regular, throwing them in dishes and stuff, or we like to use them for football Sundays stuff some cream cheese in them some bacon, bacon bits so good it's a delicious can you tell yeah. we really like cooking on football sunday right. <laughs> <laughs> um next is the chinese red noodle beans so Which we was grew a these. new item for yeah. our garden we grew these from seed i portioned them out into these bags i have five of them i didn't we get have, too too many so we had more now no, nope, just five. Um, we ate a lot of them fresh. That's true. So it's, it is what it is. But, I mean, it adds to the green beans, and it's it's good. Good to have. So we can saute these up anytime we want to, um, and they're really good. Next is a zucchini bread. The Be world's greatest zucchini world's bread. world's greatest zucchini bread. If you haven't seen that video, go watch it and make it for your family because they will thank you. Yes, they will. Yeah. Make um, all the zucchini bread. But we grew all that zucchini, like I told you, and we just had an abundance. And this is something that we do every single year. I make zucchini bread all summer long with our homegrown zucchini. And then I freeze it, and we can have zucchini bread all winter. And it's so good. It's the, it's the single reason I get fattened up for the winter. Because <laughs> I love it so much. Last but not least is our corn on the cob. This was those bushels that we bought. We canned one bushel, and we froze the hey, other you bushel. you ahead of that. Oh. Um, zucchini bread, I have 20. You got more than that. That's good. You did a second round, remember? I did, I did. I yeah. probably didn't add to my list. Yeah. But Look, here it is. <laughs> Bye. <Bye. laughs> uh, this is our corn on the cob. It's the kids' favorite. We put four in a freezer baggie and freeze them. And then we can have fresh corn on the cob all winter long. And kids absolutely love it. There's some actually in the pot right now for there dinner There is. Tonight. We're having some for dinner. Want some corn on the cob tonight? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. That is everything that we have preserved. So far. I'm going to do beans yeah. and maybe some butternut squash. As but. we say that, there are yeah. plates of tomatoes. Yeah. 
two of them completely full <laughs> sitting right here i'll show you my table i decorated for fall yesterday because i really want fall to be here so, so much food but it's hot yeah so much food and this is just a little bit of it <laughs> <laughs> so we have canned goods like she said kind of everywhere um, one of our next projects is actually built in a very good pantry yeah. it's dark it stays it's our about our coolest spot in the house uh so it's like our indoor root cellar yeah so we'll be working on that project soon for you all to see uh, if you have some ideas how to use the inside of your house in a small yeah. space to be able to do this um we have the room already we just need to declutter and shelving and all shelving, that stuff. yeah um and she also preserved a lot of her tea garden yeah um it's over there we didn't show them this just because it's mainly just dried herbs and it's kind of hard to see but yeah. there's chamomile there's marigolds chamomile um, lemon balm lemon balm uh parsley gosh cilantro basil there's more a little bit of everything. comfrey comfrey yeah um all kinds of stuff all kinds of stuff so we just got preservation all over this yeah. house it's what makes us happy it's what makes all this hard work throughout the year pay off um, and be like this is what we did this is for them you know this is for our family to eat good all through the winter not have to buy any of that stuff that might put harm in your body just because you never know what's sprayed on it um so grow your own food preserve your own food and eat healthy all winter that's right every year it seems we're doing more and more and more we grow more um, we preserve more and we have more to eat throughout the winter so that's good you know yep. it's trying to be a hundred percent self-sustainable on food um, and zach does hunt so we'll have two or three deers to can and put in the freezer and we'll be good to go yeah for very winter. much so there's hardly anything that we really have to yeah. buy oh, you want to show them all the eggs use that the home on it <laughs> and of course we got our ladies eggs that yep. we have so we have plenty of those that'll get us through too. a, lot. a yep. lot of eggs that's right <laughs> So that's it. We like to call ourselves 80% sustainable until we start getting some kind of meat animals. Yeah. Uh, we give it 80 because we do deer hunt and we preserve that like she said. Uh, so that's it for this one. That's it. I hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all have such a good preservation on your tables yeah. and in your house as well. And you know, a lot of you have even more. You, you do more than we do, yeah. so that's Hi, awesome. Yeah. Um, and for the ones that don't, I hope it inspires you to get out there and start growing your food and start putting it back so that your family can eat that healthy food all winter long. For sure. On three, everybody, tell them, tell them bye. One, two, three. Bye. bye. They love you. Until the next one. Bye, y'all.